Hey guys, it's Melissa here from MelissaOpen.com. Welcome to another episode of Awaken Your Inner Awesomeness. I'm so delighted you guys are here with us today. We have a very special guest. Today we have with us Mr. Daniel Mangana. He is a speaker, author, and producer, and he's here today to talk to us about finances and how we can live a life where we don't fear them. So I hope that you will stick around with us because we have a great show. But before we get started, we do have a word from our sponsor. Hey there, Soul Fam. Welcome to the Even Though podcast. I'm your host, Patricia Vasconcelos. I'm an EFT practitioner and emotional success coach. I'm so happy you found me. In this podcast, we'll be talking emotional freedom and all that comes along with it. The struggles, the successes, the trials and errors. So pop those earbuds in, get ready. All right. So welcome back. And Daniel, thank you so much for being here with us today. Thank you for having me. Really happy to be here. Yes, I'm so happy you're here with us today, too. And you have a very interesting story because um, life, I don't think, was always so easy for you when you first (laughs) started out. So why don't you tell us just a little bit about yourself um, so that we can get to know who you are? Sure thing. Yeah, I was late diagnosed with Asperger's. I was diagnosed when I was 27 years old. So I spent the first part of my life with severe social anxiety, severe general anxiety, really bad bouts with uh, with insomnia, all triggered by my nervous system not being able to handle the fact that I was on the spectrum and basically forcing myself to operate in a mainstream environment without that understanding. Um, so that was a um, it was a gift to find out what it was. But obviously, it was very challenging leading up to that time, not knowing what was quote unquote wrong. Um, but uh, thankfully I was able to navigate that with great support, find out what my superpowers were and to really lean into those. I love that. And I love that you haven't really let anything stop you and you're actually turning around now and helping so many other people. And one of the topics that you cover is finances. And I know there's probably a lot of people out there listening. This is one of those topics that many of us, when we hear the word finances or anything around that we kind of get this tightness in our chest and feel worried because uh, a lot of people struggle with finances and struggle with money so how are you helping people in that regard well first and foremost and just changing the internal narratives that we have around money i mean it's often to start getting to this thing of thinking that money's got an agenda or money's got like a got it out for you. Your money doesn't love me. Money's completely dispassionate. It's completely neutral. Uh, it's just waiting for instruction and it goes to where it's called. And once we can change the narrative around it, start to align uh, our emotional state to be able to hold it, our belief systems and our mindset to, to attract it, and then our behaviors to hold it, then we'll have a lot more of it. But unfortunately, a lot of the, the popular discussions are around money or either just about the habits without dealing with the mindset, just about the mindset, without dealing with the emotions and energy or just about the emotions and energy and not dealing with anything else. And what I would say kind of sets me apart from many others who play in this, this sandbox is I look at all of it, all of it together, including the life that we're looking to build around the finances that we want to create. That does sound interesting. So when you say you look at the life you want to create, how do you have your clients start doing that? Are you having them like write it down or doing Mm -hmm vision boards, things like that, or or what is it that you have your clients do? We've got a specific process called the Ideal Life Blueprint that we take people through. Uh, And the Ideal Life Blueprint, what's great about it is, is that it kind of honors one of my favorite quotes from Michael Singer. Do you know Michael Singer's work? I don't. He wrote The Untethered Soul. um, uh, And he wrote um, The Surrender Experiment. And he's got a new book. I haven't read his most recent book. But anyway, he... uh, He's got a quote that says, you know, you're in trouble when the mind is telling you how to get to God. You know, you're in trouble when the mind is telling you how to get to God. And and for me, what I take away from that quote is an understanding that the mind is a great tool, but it's not the leader. Uh, And when you're allowing that to be the thing that's directing you, you're you're in a bit of trouble. And so what we do is we, we kind of bypass the mind, the conscious thinking mind. And we build an ideal life blueprint, completely heart and soul based and and purpose based. Uh, And we've got a process we take people through generally through a workshop that, that, helps them build that out and then we look at okay now i'm clear on the life that i actually want to live what are the resources that would support me living that life 
freely and abundantly. And then we look at creating the numbers that make that happen, changing the narratives around it, understanding the emotional state we need to hold, the belief systems, and then the habits and behaviors. So we get that target and the use of the finances first, and then we build out the, the map from there. Well, that sounds very interesting. So I want to ask, when you're working with people, what do you think is the biggest blocks people have to find mm-hmm. this? I think primarily just putting money on a pedal stool. I mean, one of the things that I found to be most powerful is to remember that nowadays money literally isn't even real. It's just numbers on a screen that someone's arbitrarily sort of typed on a typed on a, on a screen. I mean, just today, for example, I was just parking my car here at the office and I do the practice of, you know, envisioning the parking space before you get there. Because after I've take, picked up my son from school, it's lunchtime. We've got restaurants here. A lot of the time, you know, it's, it can be difficult to find a parking spot. So I always envision my parking spot before. But as I pulled up and found my parking spot, as I always do, I was like, well, hang on a minute. This parking spot actually physically exists. It's this real thing. And how easy it is. I mean, it's one of the first things that they have you play with when you're talking about, you know, manifesting silly things like manifest your parking spot. And numbers on a screen that don't even have any physical substance to them, we make more difficult than finding a parking spot when actually that should be a lot easier than finding a parking spot because it's literally just numbers on a screen. So that's one of the the first things I find people do, or they focus on just one of the things that I mentioned before. They just focus on their mindset, but they don't change their habits. They just focus on the habits. They haven't looked at their energy. They just focus on the energy, but they haven't changed their mindset when we're just focusing on one any one of the other areas not in sync can literally continue to create a block in our abundance but when we bring all of it into alignment we can become unstoppable i love the idea of just saying to yourself that it's numbers on a screen because that's so true i mean especially today we even have bitcoin and all of that which literally is not anything physical that you Mm -hmm. can see or hold or touch but it's just like you said a number on a screen Mm-hmm. And I think that makes it maybe a little easier for people to realize like, hey, like you said, it's harder to manifest a parking spot because that's a physical thing that you actually have to drive into, whereas the numbers on the screen is not really a physical tangible thing. <laughs> <No. laughs> I love that analogy. I've never really thought about it that way before. Mm. And now I'm going to shift the conversation just a little bit because I was reading about you a little bit. And there was something that you had, a topic that you had talked about that I just feel like I want to bring up because I love this insight that you're bringing about the money thing and you have a different take on it. But I also saw that you had a topic you talk about meditation. (laughs) (laughs) Yeah. Yeah. And stop (laughs) meditating. So I, because I, I'm all about meditation and I do meditation, but I would love to hear your take on this and about <laughs> it. Yeah, people get really upset when they hear the phrase, but it's funny to see people get triggered without actually stopping to break down the statement and to look at it against the backdrop of everything else that I say too. Um, I actually, I write for Entrepreneur Magazine and uh, I wrote an article a little while ago that mentioned this in the title and there was literal uproar. Entrepreneur always tag me so they have got a few million, they've got a few million followers on Twitter and they always tag me when they post an article and uh, there was uproar about the, the title of this article. <laughs> there was. This, the, and people were like, oh, how could you do this? This one guy was like, I'm never reading your magazine again. And I was like, dude, did you even, did you read the, I'm never going to read something with that title. You just, he, like, he was getting really, really angry. But if he'd read it, he'd see that I didn't say don't. And I didn't say never. I said to stop. For something to stop, it assumes that it's been in motion. So stop meditating assumes that you've actually gone into the process of meditation and then gives you what we should do next. And it really speaks to what I was mentioning a few moments ago, this idea that we just focus on one part of it and we don't look at the other pieces of the puzzle. We just look at the meditation or we just look at our chanting or we just go to our church, our synagogue, our mosque, our temple. We just do our prayer in the morning, but we don't carry any of that off the mat into the changing of our belief systems the changing of our mindset or the changing of our habits and so stop meditating really is a call to take meditation and then build on it right to roll up the mat get on your feet and go out there and do something in the world rather than just spending all of our time all of our energy all of our resourcefulness just on spiritual and mindfulness practice yeah i love that um and i actually I but I did a podcast episode a couple of weeks ago and it was all about how sometimes people get stuck on their spiritual journey 
And one of the things that um, I was talking about, because it was one of the, the topics that came up a lot, is that a lot of people learn all of these tools and they learn all of these amazing things and then they don't actually put them into practice. Mm -hmm. So then they get stuck or they do it for a little while and stop and then, then they say, well, I feel stuck. I'm not getting anywhere and you know, mm -hmm. I'm going backwards. And so it kind of goes along with what you were saying in that you're too focused on one thing. Like I'm too focused on learning different tools, but then I don't mm -hmm. actually apply them in my life. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I call that perpetual planning loop. Um, when we get so caught up in the planning of and the thinking of and the strategizing of that we don't actually do any execution. Uh, and it's a very common trait. And and it's one that actually, I was speaking to a friend just yesterday and she was having the same thing. I was like, dude, this is perpetual planning loop. Oh, I just got to do another course. I'm going to be ready after I get this certification or if I learn a little bit more. You're never going to be perfectly ready. Just go for it now. You know, do a little bit of on the job learning um, because perpetual planning loop is a very, very, very real thing. And it's a great creator of blocks for people on the road to whatever they're creating, whether it's helping their body, better relationships, living out their purpose and more money in the bank. Yeah, that gave me chills as we were talking about that, because I think that a lot of that rings true for me personally, too, is that you yeah. always feel like in the self-development journey there's always one more thing you have to do one more thing and so you're always searching but then it sort of ends up like you're chasing your own tail mm -hmm, mm -hmm. and never really and it's one of the power it's, it, and, and it's a very very powerful way that the unconscious mind actually keeps you in the same place it's imperative that remember the unconscious mind's job is to keep you safe that's its sole job uh, and it does that to the best of its ability and one of the ways that it sees things as being safe is being the same change is dangerous because we don't know what the outcomes are and so often, again, not because it's your enemy, but because it's your friend doing its job of keeping you safe, it will have you playing out the same patterns and loops all the time because that's familiar. And so when something comes up that threatens that, it will craftily construct a way to do its job of keeping you safe and keep you in the same place, which may be, you don't need to do that right now. You've got another thing to do. Oh, this is really great. But what about the next step or what about the next module, the next level of the program? Then and only then we'll be ready. And then something else comes up and it's doing this, you know, at a speed of 10,000 to 10 million times the speed of the conscious mind. So it's coming up with these reasons and coming up with these, these excuses at a pace that physically and consciously we can never keep up with. And that's okay. We don't have to. What we're invited to do instead is to just take a look at what is it that I can do right now to start to develop a feeling of safety with change, safety with growth and safety with the next step of my journey so that I'm not caught up in this perpetual planning loop all the time. So how do you, when we go back to the finances, what are some small steps that some people can take today to start mm -hmm. feeling a little bit more safe when it comes mm -hmm. to the fear surrounding money? Mm -hmm. Well, one thing I'm going to, do, to just allude to is something that we speak about in my Alchemy of Abundance workshop that we do a few times a year. Um, and the first principle is know where you are. Know and accept where you are. And a lot of people are trying to create this vision for their life. Uh, without actually knowing where they are now they might guess but you'd be surprised how many times when people have come to me thinking they're in this dire financial situation and we actually just take a look at the real numbers and it's really not as bad as they thought it was yeah but this one woman she was oh i'm in so much debt i don't know what i'm gonna do blah 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 she had like hundreds of thousands of dollars that she hadn't even checked on that was sitting in her ira account she was more than able to pay off all her debts she was able to put together some investments she's completely financially free now and it took literally weeks maybe a couple of months to make that transition and that transition began just with looking at the numbers so i'd say write down exactly where you're at how much you owe what you own what the value of it is you know look at those little accounts that you didn't know were there uh, those retirement accounts and all that kind of thing uh, and when it comes to the debt you know sit down and make a, a nice plan about what to do to take care of it when it comes down to the resources how can i leverage these and make sure that everything's operating the most but just getting some real numbers rather than just operating on like ideas and, and guesses is really, really powerful because it gives you a clean, a clean look at where things really are. Yeah, I really like that because I think that's one thing that a lot of people want to do is avoid that. Mm -hmm. don't really want to look at where they really are financially, because I think just the mere thought of sitting down and doing that brings up a lot of fear for people. Yeah, it does, unfortunately. And that fear just ends up holding people captive and unable to move forward completely unnecessarily. Yeah, because I think that example that you gave is 
that's a good point. I think a lot of people make things in their head worse than they actually are if they would just sit down and look at it. And perhaps too, there are places, because I think a lot of people, they don't want to budget either. Like, I don't want to have mm -hmm. to do a budget. But mm -hmm. we can see that maybe we're spending in areas where we don't need to be. Mm -hmm. And that can be some savings for people too. Mm -hmm. I actually look to go to the reverse. I don't look to go smaller. I look to play bigger. Uh, and the reason why it's very energetic behind it, if I'm looking to play, play smaller, I'm contracting. Instead of looking to shrink my spending, what I do is develop a conscious relationship to what I'm spending on. So I'm not cutting back. I'm just being more deliberate. And then I look to expand my income to be able to match my needs rather than cutting back on things in order to match the income because there's, there's just a different energy between the two. So developing that conscious relationship to what you're spending will have you realize, well, some of this spending was just happening because of ego or it's happening out of fear or it's happening because I'm trying to keep up with the, the Joneses. So I can start to drop those, not because I'm cutting back from a place of lack, but actually I'm just moving forward more abundantly and more, more deliberately. And then when I've got those numbers, I can sit and say, okay, well, right now I, I want to be living at a level that, well, it will cost me this amount. I'm not making this amount yet. Rather than cutting back, how can I step up? Whether it's a little bit on the side as an, as an income stream, as, you know, the side hustle culture, as they call it, or even going to look at increasing my business if I'm a business owner. Um, and there are two ways to do that. You either sell more or you increase your prices. But all of that still has to start with knowing my numbers, develop that conscious relationship to it, and then start to build out that map against that. That's a very interesting concept to change the wording even of, mm -hmm. you know, sitting down and looking at your finances. And it makes sense because we associate energy with saying like, I have to sit here and I have to cut this or I have to cut mm -hmm. that. And that seems like a negative thing instead of, Mm -hmm. more expansive so that does make sense to me I, I've mm -hmm. never really thought about it's it the same, way. it's the same with saving as well I don't call it saving I'm setting aside money to invest to grow for the future it's a very different energy different mindset behind it right. from saving for a rainy day I'm making myself energetically and mentally open to a rainy day versus I'm investing to grow for the future to continue to be in the natural space of expansion and growth I love that or saying I'm paying myself I'm yeah I'm paying yeah. myself. I love that. Yeah, that's a great idea because a lot of people, I think, we just naturally have those terms that we pick up from society saying, mm -hmm. oh, I need to do this and we call it this. But really, everything has an energy attached to it. Mm -hmm. And it automatically feels heavy or negative when we talk about budget or this or that. So I love the mm -hmm. idea of looking at it from a different perspective and giving it a new name, because mm -hmm. I think that does it. It it does matter, mm -hmm. and that energy does shift and change when you start looking at it in a different way. It does, and the shifted energy allows for different thinking different thinking allows for different actions and habits and behaviors which leads to different outcomes but if i'm keeping those things the same what do they say a, a, a sign of insanity is doing the same thing over and over again and expecting things to change if i'm feeling the same emotions over and over again or i'm in the same energy over and over again thinking the same thoughts over and over again and doing the same things over and over again then it's insanity to expect that things are going to change yeah all right, so I'm going to give you a real world example, something that I'm <laughs> and I'm going to see what your thoughts are on this or how you would maybe change the spin on this, for example. Mm -hmm. So I have two kids in college mm -hmm. and you know there are probably a lot of people out there also experiencing this. You have kids who go off to college and my daughter is looking at schools now. She's changing from a a community college, which was paid for, to now going to a four-year school, which she'll get some money for it, but it's still quite a lot that, she, you know, we'll have to pay to go to this new school. Mm -hmm. And that's also kind of creates this oh, fear and doubt and worry and all of these things. So how do you shift that when mm -hmm. you're looking at, okay, I know I'm going to have to, I know I have these finances coming up. It's mm -hmm. not really any way of avoiding that. Mm -hmm. So what's your take on how would you look at that? 
first and foremost, we need a goal yeah. to be working towards. And notice I said working towards, not something to be running away from. Because a lot of people set their goals according to what they're running away from, but that puts you in a space of resistance and resistant energy can't receive. So if you're saying, I don't want to feel like this, or I don't want that situation, that's pushing away energy. So where's the space for things to come in? So what is it that I desire? What am I being called forward? And so I'd invite you to frame your desire in this situation into a specific series of, of words. It might be, I desire the resources to abundantly cover the um, the outlay for my daughter's education and to be in a place of ease and grace or whatever it is. But once we've done that, then we start to look at what are the particular emotions that you want to be sitting in at the end of the day. And it sounds like I'm going a long way around, but there's no point jumping to the physical aspect of it until we've dealt with the emotion and the mindset. Then we look at what are your limiting beliefs sitting around it. So what negative stories are popping up? And then we challenge those to see if they're actually true. Then and only then will we pick up a pen and paper and start looking at the numbers and starting to look at what are the numbers, where are we in relationship to the numbers, and what's available now as opportunities to close that gap. I love that. That is definitely a different way of looking at it because mm -hmm. um, I know the immediate response is, how are we going to do this? Mm -hmm. And, oh, this is not, it seems impossible. Mm -hmm. So being able to flip that a little bit feels better than <laughs> that's impossible or how are we going to mm -hmm. do this? I mean, one of the craziest things is that we as humans always try to work out the how and the details but we literally don't have the processing power to work out the how the, the details. It's not our role to work out how the details is to get clear on what the end goal is and to honor what emerges as we move on the journey to that and take the action that supports it. And so you don't, I mean, there are billions of people in the world, um, organizations, opportunities, and an, an infinite number of different ways that this could happen. By you trying to work it out, actually, you're just taking your processing power and locking it in versus release and just, stick to this is my goal this is what i'm moving towards this is what i'm working on and allow that to be your singular focus that feels so much better to look at it like that <laughs> doesn't it and <laughs> yeah. didn't you feel a weight lift go for shoulders? i did i absolutely felt the weight lifted i did you don't need to absolutely. you don't need to there are opportunities outside of your awareness that you didn't even know were coming together there's a universal law called the law of polarity as well which is another one that we really dive into when we do the alchemy of abundance weekend which dictates that everything in reality is a whole it's it's a whole thing now, sometimes the whole has two sides to it, but those two sides, those two polarity points are still of the same part, which includes the polarity points between the non-physical and the physical aspect of a desire. So the fact that you have a desire for the thing means that there's a non-physical aspect. Now, because everything is whole in reality, the second that you really start to build a deep and meaningful connection to the non-physical aspect, in that very moment, the physical manifestation of the outcome stops being a possibility and a potential and physically shows up as an opportunity. But the thing is, because we get so caught up in trying to work out the how, instead of being open to receive the opportunity, we miss or we don't see that the opportunity was there the whole time. And so the invitation is stop trying to work out the details, dive deeper into the desire and understand and know that the deeper that I'm attached to the desire, the law of polarity says that the opportunity must be there in the same time and space. And it's about opening up to what the opportunity is rather than trying to calculate and dictate what the opportunity should be. Yeah, I like that. And plus, when we try to figure out the how and when, why things are going to show up, we're kind of limiting how yeah, exactly. and when they could show up. Definitely. It's one of the one of the killers. There are so many people that have the, the, the opportunity available, but it ends up being, being smothered by us dictating what it needs to be or what it needs to look like or even completely missing it because we're over here trying to calculate what it looks like or what it should be. Yeah. And I, I feel like that's one of the things that subconsciously I do a lot without realizing that I do that when mm. it comes to finances, I feel like I, I try to calculate everything so much that I'm doing that like, pushing things mm -hmm. away and, and, and missing opportunities instead of just allowing. And the allowing thing, I mean, that's so true. Like we talk about that all the time and manifesting it's mm -hmm. allowing, but that's the thing I think people have the hardest time with. I mean, I think Rumi, he's quoted as saying it, whether he said it or not. And it's someone that just made a, a meme and put Rumi on it just to give it some credibility. But it says, um, you know, 
seek not love for love already is seek instead the barriers to love that exist within you and we can call this you know we can substitute out love for abundance um there's a meme i saw once you it says a uh, your brain's going to explode when you realize that abundance was always here. It doesn't need to be created. All that we really create is the blocks to abundance. That's so true. That's true. That's I mean, I've seen it in my own life when I stop worrying and I release and let go that things come mm-hmm. in and you're like, how did that work out? Yeah, mm-hmm. absolutely. Mm-hmm. Well, I've loved this conversation and it has been so interesting and helpful. And I really <laughs> appreciate you being here to share this with us today. My pleasure. If there are people out there listening who really are enjoying what you're saying and they would love to follow you or work with you, what's the best way for them to do that? To go to dreamwithdan.com. Dreamwithdan.com is my website. There's uh, free resources on there, including uh, a video that I made on how to be a harmonious money magnet. It should pop up as soon as you pop on the uh, on the website. It's completely free. It's about 40 minutes long and it breaks down um, how to, to understand your thermostat how to break uh, the perpetual planning loop that we spoke about before and another secret too. Um, my social media links in there, podcast, um, my blog's on there as well. Everything's there, including some free resources, but it's dreamwithdan.com. And we'll have the link in the show notes too, so people can go directly there and click on it so they don't have to go searching very far. So <laughs> right there. And Thank I you. love that. Thank you for offering that free resource for people because I think that's so super helpful. My pleasure. Well, thank you so much for being here. And if you have one piece of advice, one little nugget of wisdom that you could leave with the audience for today, what might that be? Just to go back to that thing we said earlier about it all just being numbers on a screen and to remember that those numbers on a screen are not as real as some of the other amazing stuff that you've probably manifested in your life till now. I love it. I love looking at it that way. It makes things so much easier and less burdensome when you think about it in that manner so thanks for sharing your insights with us today thank you so much for being here and i want to thank all of you for being here with us today as well as always if you like this podcast please subscribe please leave a positive review from wherever you're listening and if you share this podcast with others you are helping me in my mission which is to help as many people as possible if you want to work with me you can go to my website melissaoatman.com there you'll see all the services i offer and if you would like to book with me you can thank you so much for supporting us and being here with us i hope you have a beautiful day from where ever you're listening. As always, I am sending you so much love and light, and I will talk to you soon. Bye, guys.